Welcome, subscribers. Thank you, subscribers, for following us, sharing our videos. And welcome, new subscribers. My name is Miss Penny. I run the chemistry channel and the store. And I am, my name is Penelope Horton, if you are uh, Penelope Stewart, if you want to look at my book, uh, you can find my book, Matriarch the Patriarch, on Amazon. Again, you can find Matriarch to Patriarch on Amazon or Lulu if you're interested in my book and we appreciate your support. Uh, I'll try to leave a link here for you to purchase the book if you're interested in knowing more about your story, women, your ancient mother's story, your great mother's story. Thank you for being here today. Today I ran across... A video I thought that was very interesting hearing this brother's story though it was not the accurate uh, accounts of events in the way the ancestors revealed to me uh, in my divine insight the way I saw it uh, it was a confirmation that men did have a leverage in taking over the matriarch empire they had outside influences there was another force that came in and helped these men be able to come in and suppress the divine feminine force and destroy our power sources on this planet again the energy on this planet is divine feminine and so when you have these outside forces, I don't know if it was, excuse me, I don't know if it was the Anunnaki. Who knows if it was the Anunnaki? I don't know. You know, but I do, the ancestors did tell me it was an outside force that came in to help these men and they began to destroy all these power sources and mystical beings when they came uh, into power. Now, uh, now, the Anunnaki, that you know, sounds plausible because he said that he started messing with genetics. But in this story, he tells it in reverse. And it's actually these men that's going in here, uh, the Sumerian men that's being influenced by the Anunnaki. And, the Anun and they were maybe enslaved. After they left uh, Egypt, they could have been enslaved by the Anunnaki. But I know... The Egyptians, the matriarch culture, had to march these Hebrew men up out of there. And and Moses had this 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 power that he had developed that he had learned from the Egyptian culture. Now he could have tainted that in some way. I don't know. But I do know they came in in contact with another force that disrupted that disrupted the matriarch empire something absolutely happened there and they go into europe and they civilize europe could they have come in contact with these beasts absolutely i think so they could have absolutely and civilized some of them they would have had the power of the anunnaki to do it and, and that explains why uh, this hidden hand a uh, black nobility is able to hide up under these pale people that don't look like us. Again, they were genetically engineered to look at them now. There could have been some genetically engineering going on with the Anunnaki here. But it, 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 and we were cut off from them. We, we didn't want to be around men and, and because they, in the capacities patriarchs got together, we just was just like, no, we're not having it. So I'm sure there was a shortage of women there that go up into Europe and they start creating their own society. Uh, they were called Moors. They left Egypt. They were called Afrim people. They were not called Hebrews. They were called breakaway people, break away from their mother, their divine feminine. They broke away. They wanted to find that. They were very specific about that in their Bible. They came from Sumer. They came from Sumer. They were very specific saying they came from Sumer. 
Yet you find them marrying these Egyptian Canaanite women that are priestess, prophetess in the ancient world. They knew the rituals. So they're giving their self a divine authority and recognition through these women or else no one would have listened to them. They were very strategic when they, uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, record themselves marrying these women because they knew these women gave them recognition in the ancient world, especially Abraham. And then we look at Moses. Moses was the forerunner. He had the magic of Egypt. He had the, the, the knowledge. And a lot of them, when they left there, they were great carpenters. They were great uh, builders because they had learned all of this from the matriarch culture. They had might as well been Egyptians. And I don't even think they were Egyptians at all. I believe Samaria is actually up for Egypt. I think the maps are wrong because how close Samaria is to Egypt and how they try to divide uh, that lower Egypt on the other side. I really believe Samaria were where these Hebrews were, that they were ancient, uh, that th these were the ancient Hebrews later putting themselves, setting themselves up to serve in the Egyptian order when they start to build over the matriarch empire because they did it first. This first overthrow with the matriarch empire happened first in Egypt. And then we finally got free from them and we marched them out because they were not slaves. They were trying to enslave matriarchs. See how they do it? This is what we're talking about. Uh, X, Y chromosome defective. So he's going to tell, he's not going to be honest about it. Not in his mind. Even in his Bible, he says, there is no other God before me. You know, the Anunnaki, uh, whoever it was, I don't know who was it, but it was an outside force that guided men to do that. We're giving them too much credit. They wouldn't have known how to do this on their own on and keep this suppressed in the capacity that they have they would need outside help they were not very smart you know we're talking about somebody who can't really you know they're not they're not that smart okay somebody is giving them extra help all right but i want you to watch this video and i'm gonna give uh my narrator um insight on it and then you make your own choice you know you put your uh put it in the comments okay yeah they were black the anunnaki were black but they weren't us they had ceased being us a long long time ago and for those that know they know anyhow they came in and they caught us off guard they came in the lower cabin. And while the, while the defenses were down, they took over. You know what I'm saying? This is just a reality. We got hit, took our first hit. And they did what they do, they, they did what they do best. They started to imitate us. They became pharaohs in that region. And for 400 years, they enslaved the African Hebrews that were in that region that had been contributing to Kemet with their sciences and their knowledge and their art. And they took these African Hebrews that were in Lower Kemet, what we now call Israel, and they, they marched a lot of them to Babylon. They marched them to Babylon, enslaved them, and forced them abolished their knowledge, their science, their art, and they took that knowledge and they used it to genetically alter creatures, to some of the first, you know what I'm saying, genetic research was going on. They were creating humanoids. They wanted to live forever. They wanted to create vessels that they could transfer into and live forever. How crazy they were. And so, Tahaka and Lower Nu in Upper Nubia. My bad. In Upper Nubia forms an army of 150,000 Africans from seven different nations. And they go on a warpath. 
They're taking out everything that is not African. Everything that can't grow an afro must go. Plus, they're coming to get the Hebrews. These are their brothers. The blood. You understand me? So they begin to take these Assyrians, they begin to take them out. All the way up to what we call Lebanon. And when Tarhaka gets up to this region, he realizes, damn, his, his troops start talking about seeing these giants, these hairy giants, half men, half beasts, that they're fighting up in these mountains of Syria. Some 10 feet tall, smell so bad you can, you can smell them downwind a half a mile away. He tells, he tells to who? To build a wall. You think the Great Wall of China was mighty? They built this wall, knowing that this wall could block these beasts from ever entering the Holy Lands again. They would have to take the Arabian Desert. Maybe. Yeah, they were black. The Anunnaki were black, but they weren't us. They had ceased being us a long, long time ago. And for those that know, they know. Anyhow, they came in and they caught us off guard. They came in the lower Kemet. And while the, while the defenses were down, they took over. You know what I'm saying? It's interesting to note it's right here when he said when they came in, they caught us right off here, guard. Who is you talking team. about? Are you talking about they the did, Anunnaki? They did, they did Are you talking about these, you know, these hairy giants that came out of nowhere? But uh, it's interesting to know it was the Anunnaki. See, they came in by the Anunnaki, and the Anunnaki came in with them, uh, came in first trying to create a slave race. And they were tired of being slaves. They were tired of being slaves. They need to come up with another plan because the men of color, again, these are the same men from Samaria. These are the same men from Ur. They came in contact with these Anunnaki. They have it. Uh, written in their history, you know, on the walls of their their history. If you go there to Samaria, you can see some of that. You can see some of of it online. So again, they came in contact. He's letting you know they came in contact with this this force. But see here, he's not being specific enough. Is it the Anunnaki or is it these um, these hairy people? So I digress. Let's move on. Humanoids. They wanted to live forever. They wanted to create vessels that they could transfer into and live forever. This is how crazy they were. And so, Tahaka in Lower New, in Upper Nubia, my bad, in Upper Nubia, forms an army of 150,000. See here, see here, it doesn't make any sense to march them back to Babylon because they are from Samaria and to take knowledge from the Hebrews or the Egyptians or whatever because the Anunnaki is a more superior race. They're more superior. They don't need their knowledge. They already know that. They wrote the book on that. You're talking about a superior uh, beings that coming in. Uh, that is taking over the inferior being, which are men, and they are messing with their DNA. And these patriarchs, they came in here, and now they got a shortage of women. Uh, they can't mate. And so these Anunnaki is here to help them resolve this problem. The problem that they're having with these women and trying to overthrow this planet, uh, the divine feminine on this planet. So the Anunnaki comes in and gives them a solution to their problem to see they're tired of being giants. slaves so now they have to find Here other service and what do they do they go into your so mountains. this kind of explains everything so you know i want to kind of know our rate because the way this brother is pay, uh, putting things together okay let's continue to listen he tells he tells to who to build a wall you think the great wall of china was mighty they built this wall, knowing that this wall could block these beasts from ever entering the Holy Lands again. 
Okay, so you heard the recording. You you saw the whole entire video. He talks about how these hairy beasts, which are, uh, he's talking about the pale people and uh, being able to go in up in there and conquer those people. Um, they actually was able, after they got themselves together, again, we have these Moors going up, up into Europe civilizing these people. Now, is it a possibility they fought with some of these beast-like people? Absolutely. I think absolutely. But the story is told in reverse. They actually went up into, uh, they agreed to work with the Anunnaki. They didn't want to be enslaved anymore. They began to uh, do scientific studies on these other hairy-like beings. And that's when they discovered that, hey, we can domesticate these beings. These beings can be overseers. And you men, you some men of Samaria, you don't have to be slaves anymore. We can actually uh, train y'all to train them to be front people for you guys. And that way, uh, you don't have to be enslaved. And then you, this will be your paradise. And everything thing will be about you. You will just make it about you as long as you agree to keep this divine feminine suppressed and feed us this negativity because see that's what we need you know we need this planet energy to be at a certain level in order for us to exist and since you guys are greedy and you you know you're up for the job you want to be in charge you'll do anything to be in charge even suppress the divine feminine hey we'll let you do it but we have to be in agreement with each other this where you got these mason mason these men mason uh masonic organizations and see what they done that comes from if you look at that that comes from a matriarch culture they're wearing the apron and all that stuff this is why this stuff turns into perversity because it was never designed for men. Again, I would say this again, masonary, mason, masonary that was not ever designed for men. The priesthood, the priestesshood belonged to women. Men were soldiers, they were warriors uh, that followed the commands of divine authority, the divine feminine authority. Okay, now I could just, you know, I just summed this up for you. And I'm sure there was other events that happened to get it to that point. But just to sum it up, that is exactly what happened. We were bamboozled. Okay, and then later it turned into a race thing when the power structure between the black men and the white men that race for power. Again, we have these men, they're not very smart. We give them more uh, credit for their intelligence, but they're really not smart. Again, they stole this spirituality from their mothers, divided into religion, and created civilizations, try to create uh, what you call it um, a knockoff, uh, a false civilization up under it, a false society that just this, this does and it's is dismantling and crumbling before their eyes right now okay beloved so you hear it here you hear it now uh yeah this and it, i like when this guy tells this story even though it's not as accurate as it should be it confirms my divine insight from the great mother about what happened to her children what happened to the children the civilization that she loved and cared for and how these you know outside forces came in and deceived men because that's what you have happening it will not be a man that saves humanity it will be a woman man has proven that he cannot do it beloved so let's stop looking at them to do it. Let's stop. Let's stop giving them that much credit. And women, it's time for us to, you know, plant our flag and take their responsibility and to start raising better civilizations. And it starts with tearing down patriarchy. I hope you found this video insightful. I hope you found it helpful. You know, uh, my job is to share the message and to be uh 
in the forefront of this movement because I believe this is a movement. I think this is a movement for women to take back our power. We are changing uh, the way we interact with men. I think this is a movement. We're taking back our sacred power. We're breaking down all the misogyny of religion. I, I think I think this is a movement. I really do. And I think we're going to see more of this as women come together and share that sacred power and grow and heal. Thank you for being here with me today, beloved. Light, love, namaste, ashe, love one.